Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. We're here at the Muscle Car and Corvette National in Rosemont, Illinois at the Rosemont Convention Center. I'm here with Craig Goles. Craig, good to see you. Good to see you, Lou. Car owner of this car we're going to be featuring here. And I'm also with Tim, Tim, Tim Smith, who's the restorer of the car. So I'm going to grab the cameras I usually do. So just, we'll start with Tim. So Tim, tell me, when you're restoring a car like this, what are some of the highlights of a car like this? Well, it was really nice to start out with a rust-free car. Uh, it was all matching numbers. The whole car was there. Uh, basically disassembled the entire car, uh, every nut and bolt, and then reassembled the car. But it was just a great car when it came in. It just really needed a restoration. So, so this one was a wonderful car. I saw you doing all the detail underneath it. You've done a great job on the car. I'm going to move over to Craig. Craig, now you're touting this car as the rarest Impala in the world. That's a big statement. It is. It is. The reason we feel that way is because we're not aware of another car that General Motors delivered to the Proving Grounds in Mesa, Arizona. And the car survived. It not only survived, it survived with all of its original sheet metal, it has all of its original floors, trunk pan, and all numbers matching. So it has the original 385 horsepower 427, the original transmission, the original rear end. So again, to have survived for that number of years since 1967, yeah. completely intact, and a car that documented with the protecto plate, with the factory invoice, the build sheet, we know was delivered by General Motors directly to the proving grounds, we think makes it the rarest Impala in the world. And let's take a look at some of these stats. First of all, let me just give people, I can't keep them that long from the car. Let's let's give them a, a look at what we're going to be looking at. So this is just a wonderfully stunning, clean car. And it's really, the beauty of this car is in the details. So let's start out with... It's an Impala SS, which means it's going to have some more of the highly optioned pieces. And one of the other unique things about this car is this little badge right here, which says 427. So let me just, for those of you who want to see some of the details of the lady in red, let's show you this details like so. And of course, you can stop on anything you'd like to. Right there. Now I'm just curious, were there other 427 engines that had less than 385 horsepower? Not in 1967. Okay, so this is it. Correct. Now, there was an option available on the 67 Impala called Z24. Okay. Z24 was the SS427. What makes this car really remarkable is that it's a 427 Impala without the Z24 option. The Z24 option, even though it's unique, yeah. is, is rare, but not as rare as this car. Because it doesn't have the Z24. It does not have the Z24 option. This car was also delivered with every power option that could be ordered from General Motors. It has power windows, power seats, power brakes, power steering, air conditioning, headrests, shoulder belts. Every option box that could be ticked off on the sheet was ticked off for this car. Wow. Perhaps because it was a test car. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at our car from the side. Get that all in for you. There's your very clean 67. So let's get a closer look. We've got the clean Impala SS there, as you can see. We've got the wonderful. Did they have a name for these rims? Were they like the rally rims or something? Or correct. Rally wheels. Rally wheels. And this car, of course, has factory disc brakes. Oh, really? Let's take a look at the back. Oh, that's pretty. That's plain and pretty, isn't it? It is gorgeous. The EG7837, which yeah. you see on the license plate. Yes. 
was the number assigned to this car as a test car by General Motors. That's documented by plate on the original owner's manual. Pencil there on the factory invoices, the build sheets, that number of years, everything on this car. Let's open the door, please. Do you drive this one, Craig, or is this trailer? This car has been driven, uh, I would have to ask Tim, but I would say three or four or five miles since the restoration. Wow. Okay. So, so when you say a restoration is fresh, this, this is one's it. fresh. This is super fresh. Okay, right. all right. So are you planning on driving? I guess that's another question. It, it will be driven at some point in its life. But uh, not right now, it's too pretty. We have shown the car a couple of times. Uh, at the AACA, the Antique Automobile Club of America, uh, last show we did, on a 400-point scale, this car got 400 points. No deduction. Really? Right. Holy cow. May I sit in it? Absolutely. Okay, all right. But Tim has done a wonderful job with the restoration. Holy it's cow. 400 close. out of 400. That's crazy. That's silly numbers right there. That's a big dashboard. That's a wide gauge cluster. Yes, it is. You might be able to see this on the camera, Lou, if you pan to the left where you see the tachometer. Right below there's it. There's a very small little strip that says do not exceed 4,000 RPM. General Motors put that there for the test drivers so they didn't tax the engine too hard when it was being tested in Arizona. That's the same label maker that was used to put the lettering on the uh, on the owner's manual and other documentation that we have with the car, so it all matches up. That's amazing. I, I Craig, I actually, sadly on my own, when you said it was a 400 out of 400, I didn't think somebody accidentally took a label maker and put it there. <laughs> I, I kind of figured that was supposed to be there, but I'm glad that you said that. It was one of the things that Tim and I discussed because he was wondering whether or not to remove it. And we decided since it was original to the car and it was put there by General Motors, we would leave it. And as a result, we've explained that many times to you know, others who have looked at the car, you know, why is that label there? Well, now you could just send them the video and they'll understand. So Absolutely. That's all good stuff. <laughs> let's, uh, let's open up the hood, shall we? Sure, of course. Tim, if you don't mind, let's open it up. That's a big, that's a big engine. Wow. With the air conditioning on a convertible, which is really rare in 67. You either got the convertible or you got the air conditioning. Usually you did an option for both of them. And we suspect the reason for that, again, because this was a test car in the desert. Right. The General Motors wanted to push the limit of what those options would take, what the radiator would take, what the air conditioning would take in desert conditions. Yeah. We talked about the number that's, that's on the license plate of the car and the fact that it's on several uh, of the documents. This is one example. There's the original owner's manual with the number of the car which was put there by General Motors with the same label maker that put the, the label on the dashboard. So it's really an incredible piece of history. Yeah. Well, Craig, let's start her up. Start her up. All right, Tim, twist the key for us.
400 on a 400, you get an A+. Plus. Thank you. <laughs> well Thank done. You. Unbelievable. Craig, another amazing car. We looked at your Mustang, your 65 uh, Shelby today, and uh, appreciate that. So much fun. Thanks for being on my car store. We appreciate it, too. Thanks for your time. Thank Thanks, you. Lou.